Dear Professor Ecker, how do you remember telling Professor Bertelmann about the Bell paper? Yes, um, I remember quite well that day, but before I uh, tell you more about it, I have to explain uh, what a preprint is. Because, uh, as I realized a few weeks ago, uh, people of the younger generation, they, they don't connect anything with the word preprint. One of my colleagues asked me, what do you mean preprint? You just load it down from the archive, the paper, and that's it. So this is, of course, before the internet. The, the anecdote, uh, the event takes place in the summer of 1980. So that was even before we used email here at the Institute. It came early 80s or middle of 80s. And uh, the internet, uh, the, uh, the World Wide Web, as you know, invented at CERN, really came about in the early 90s. So at that time, uh, institutes who uh, wanted to uh, make their work known to the other uh, scientists, they, um, before even publishing the paper, they copied the scientific papers and then sent them out to different institutions. So for instance, in our institute, and this is something I must also say, this was only done by institutes that were really science-oriented. There were institutes that were not so much science-oriented, they did not do that, but we had as our um, uh, director, Professor um, Thiering, and he of course always paid uh, a lot of emphasis to, to research and the importance of it. So anyway, we, we had about 150 addresses of, of different institutions and every time somebody wrote a paper, actually we always waited a few weeks and then, then we sent this out all over the world to these 150 institutions. And CERN did that of course on a much wider scale. I don't know how many addresses they had, a few hundreds anyway. And so, um, I won at one, yes, and I must also say, um, at that time, I, I had been at CERN in the early 70s, 1971 72, as a fellow, and there I learned the system what to do with those preprints, namely not just to read them and throw them away, but to catalog them. And so, when I came back in early 1973, I um, asked my colleagues, and they, were, they agreed that we should. Uh, have a system of cataloging these preprints so that everyone could afterwards just go uh, to our catalog and in our tea room or a small library and uh, uh, find the paper. And so I was in charge of organizing this. I, I distributed the material once a week to one of my colleagues and this person during one month was in charge of, of uh, uh, doing the, this cataloging. So one day, it must have been in the summer or maybe early September 1980, I have this pile of uh, paper in, in our library and uh, then suddenly uh, a paper immediately catches my attention and this, this uh, paper is actually the, the original paper. This paper says it is written by John Bell from CERN and the title is Bertelmann's Socks and the Nature of Reality. And uh, of course, I immediately got curious. I, I, I knew already about uh, the socks of my friend Reinhard Bertelmann, but I had no idea that a scientific paper would be written about it. And so I, I yes, glanced through the pages and then I saw this, this uh, drawing, which uh, clearly was uh, Reinhold at that time, long hair, <laughs> and his, uh, his cap was also very typical. And so I was very excited about it. As you see, I, I encircled it. This is really my encircling here. I, mm -hmm. I mutilated the paper, so to say, and also this exclamation mark uh, just shows that I'm not an artist. It looks more like a potato than an exclamation <laughs> mark. And so I come, uh, I think at that time he was working in the computer room, as far as I recall. And so I come into the room, hold this paper out and say, look, Reinhold, now you are famous. <laughs> And the second part of the sentence, he usually suppresses when he talks about it, he's just too shy about it. But this is a prediction uh, which really came out true. Now this uh, cult object, so to say, in, in art and not just in science. In, I was in several books you can read about Bettelmann socks. And as I heard from you actually, you, mm -hmm. you go to the internet and uh, look for Bettelmann socks and uh, I don't know how many entries there yeah. are. Hmm. So that, that was this story. Mm -hmm. What about your socks? Ah, yes, now uh, since I am a particle physicist and not a quantum engineer, I always have socks of similar colors. 
and usually they are not even pink, as in, in Reinhold's example in this paper, <laughs> but just grey or green sometimes. I'm sorry, I cannot <laughs> offer more than that. <laughs>